Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. So let's let's do that. I'll I'll kick us off here with with this is uh, episode eight, I think, <laughs> of, of conversations <laughs> with the community. We've got Malcolm here from Florida, and uh, yeah, go for it. Take it away, right there. All right. Um, so I got into J Cole, um, really early when he came out. I think he came out around two thousand ten ish. I think that's when Who That came out. That was his first single, um, Who That. And um, that blew me away because I had never heard anybody with his type of flow or anything. Um, it was just very strong, man. It was just a very strong delivery. And then I got into his mixtapes. Um, and what I started to notice as far as the general public taking in J. Cole a lot of people really thought that he was boring. Um, his beat selection, right. um, his delivery, sometimes his subject matter. Um, and then you put it all together and, and a lot of people just thought, I'm just not getting it. <laughs> or yeah. or um, it, it's just not hitting me, man. Like whenever I listen to him, he's kind of dull or whatever. For me, it was the complete opposite. I was I was completely all in with this dude. Um, I, I wanted to hear anything that he was on. It didn't matter what it was. Um, so once I, like, once 2014 Forest Hills came out, the conversation around him completely switched. And to me, that was because it was the beats on this album, it was his delivery, and it was just his overall swagger and confidence. That's one thing that I noticed about this album because on first listen, I was literally shocked. <laughs> like, like literally, like, what am I listening to? Like, what is going on here? Like, did he go in the booth and somebody like really piss him off? Like, <laughs> like, like, did he have a really bad meeting with his label before he made this album? <laughs> I don't know what happened. Um, and I, I, I mean, I, I still to this day when I when I remember listening to the album for the first time, I get shocked all over again because I'm like, this was a whole nother J Cole man. So was it? A, um, I mean, I haven't heard any of his early. I, I've only listened to 2014. Or was it a pretty substantial mm -hmm. departure that album from his previous work? Not not as far as the subject matter, but as far as the beats and his delivery. Okay, and just his overall like like. Like, I don't know what the word is, but his, but his, just everything that he brought to the album just felt different this time. Okay. I mean, um, he does seem and, very confident in that album. Very comfortable. Oh, yeah. And I don't think we've seen him drop that confidence ever since he put out this album. Um, I really think that he started to hear what people were saying about him as far as the critiques about his beats and delivery and all of that. And as an artist, Although I don't make music, I've tried to, but I am an artist. I do creative things. Like hearing people critique your work in a not so nice manner, uh -huh. it can really get to you. Yes, it can, it can really get to you. Yeah. And with that, you can either just sharpen the tools that you already have, or you can just try to be somebody that you're not. Um, and I think with J. Cole, he literally just sharpened every tool that he had. Um, and like I said, like, he's always been a very lyrical rapper. Like, his pen and the way he writes his lyrics, is it's always been top tier to me. So I didn't really feel like he too much improved in that area. It was better. But as far as the beat, the beats is what was the biggest difference. Because he's never really had those hard-hitting beats like you get on um, G-O-M-D or Fire yeah. Squad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. G-O-M-D is um, really good. I like that one those beats like really hit <laughs> the first time I heard G-O-M-D I'm like what the fuck is this <laughs> I'm like yeah. what is going on in here man like and um Fire Squad the, the the lyrical delivery on that was impeccable to me it was it was truly truly 
I don't know, man. <laughs> I feel like I'm rambling and I'm not letting you get in. No, no, no. It's fine. Way. I mean, it, it, you know, the, the, these situations are kind of weird too. I've noticed because the, uh, you know, they tell you when you're having a conversation with someone, you do active listening, right? Where you say, yeah. And you, and you, uh -huh. But I found in this situation, when if I try and say that while you're talking, it makes for a worse experience for the listener. So I try and just shut up and let you talk. <laughs> I got you. I understand. So don't worry about that. <laughs> you know, I um, in terms of the beats and stuff, I really like, uh, oh, I was just listening to it this morning. I put it on. Uh, apparently, I like that one a whole lot. Um, Hello, yeah. I like that one a whole lot. And then St. Tropez. I think still is probably my favorite and you know, it's got the string instruments in there and stuff like that. And it's just a great, when, great track. When I watched your review, why was that one of your favorite tracks? Because to me, when I first heard that song, I liked it. You know, I was like, okay, this is a nice switch up from the rest of the album, you know, a nice more mellow laid back track for you to just, you know, take in, so to say, rather than like, oh, wow, this is crazy beats, crazy lyrics and stuff like that. It wasn't more so that at all. So I wanted to know why you thought that. Well, I think, I think obviously, you know, there's a lot of subjectivity that goes with listening to music and stuff. And I think with that track, I, I, if I think back to my initial reaction, I remember, you know, he, he what was it? There's a tale of two cities and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, adolescence and wet dreams. And it seemed like in that first half of the album, he was kind of building up, to a position of almost like a, a form of transformation. And then St. Tropez, I remember saying in that video, it just felt like, or in that track, it felt like he was being pulled away. You know, like he, he's finally at this, this kind of crossroads of, okay, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm actually gonna make it and become a famous rapper or, and, and make some money. But in that sense, I'm also being pulled away from where I came from. And okay. I think, you know, watching that, I assume you've seen the homecoming documentary that kind of shows the live show and, and documents yeah, uh -huh. that album. Yeah. I got that sense a lot from that documentary too. Like you can tell J Cole really cares about where he came from and the people that live mm -hmm. there and, and all that stuff, which is, I right. think it's great. And that even cemented St. Tropez more for me. Cause it, I, I think it's the string instruments, it being a slower song. And then I also listened to a lot of uh ambient and dark ambient so any anytime there's there's music where it's it's just got like these subtle tones and almost like a haunting <clears throat> sound i really connect yeah. with it and so that's one that's why i mean it just it just feels like he's slowly being pulled yeah. you know <laughs> and there's a like i felt this low level of an anxiety in it too like oh shit, it's happening it's happening do i actually want this to happen yeah and, maybe i'll go maybe i'll stay yeah like like that yeah. one there is like uh <laughs> yeah so um, that's why that's why that one really clicked with me so much okay that's interesting um it's interesting because i've never really heard anybody say that was their favorite song and then you actually <laughs> have a, a pretty good reason as to why so <laughs> you know most people they'll say um tell the two cities uh no role models or fire squad or whatever um I really like Love Yours, man. That's a great Love song. Love Yours. I cried the first time. I literally shed tears the first time I heard that song. It's a great because, song. Because, um, <laughs> you know, like, coming from, coming from my community, we always want to be super successful, um, just given us having the lack of opportunities or them being taken away from us, all the type of stuff that went on in this country. So when J. Cole came out with Love Yours and he's pretty much telling us like, yeah, the money and the fame, that's all nice and you know, it makes you feel good sometimes, but it's really not what it's cracked up to be. Yeah. And you hear celebrities say that a lot. Yeah. You know, so like being somebody who doesn't have what they have um, couldn't even fathom the amount of things and experiences that they've been in um, to hear them say that before we can even get a chance at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's almost like, well, what are we chasing? <laughs> right. What were you chasing? <laughs> right. Um, I mean, granted, you know, we would love to have their money and stuff, but if it's true what they're saying, that the problems and all of that that comes with it and this, that, and the third, 
it's almost like, is it worth trying to be a millionaire? Is it worth trying to make all of this excess money to to take back to your family, this, that, and the third, or whatever? Um, and then you know, to him tell us like, you know, he thinks he was happy when he was broke. <laughs> right, right. I think <laughs> like, being broke was better. Yeah, that yeah. line. Yeah, like what? <laughs> like who in the world says that after reaching? Million. <laughs> right. That is something that is like I, I've I've never heard anybody do that, but um, like it it really makes you appreciate. Well, to me, that song really makes you appreciate. Um, I come from a pretty good family. Um, I've I've had a pretty decent life. Um, in my twenty seven years being here, um. And I really love my family. Like we, we, we are very close and everything. So when he came out with that song, and I was also just getting out of high school when it came out, and I'm confused as hell trying to figure out where to go in the world. Yeah, what type of job do I want? All this stuff. You know, I'm a young man. I need to do this. I need to do that. Um, hearing hearing him come out with that song, it really put it put an ease to, to some of the stress that I was going through. Um, some of the things that I, that I couldn't figure out, you know, thinking that I needed to have at that time or whatever. I listened to that song at least 10 times a day when it came out, because I was like, to me, there also weren't too many rappers um, putting out the type of message that he was putting out at that time either. Yeah. Um, at least not on the same level and with the same lyrical content and and all like it was just the overall package that he had together, um, and the way he put together some of those songs it was it was really amazing to me. Yeah, I think with "Love Yours," there's a phrase I I I try to keep in my mind. I don't do it very well, but the phrase is, "Health is the crown that only the sick can see," and the idea the idea being that. You only really notice how nice it is to be healthy, you know, physically healthy when you're sick, you know, uh, when you're just going around and having your normal life and, and everything's fine. You don't really think about it because you're just you're focused on all these other things. But then when you get sick or you get hurt or whatever, you realize, oh, man, like it was so nice before not having my yeah, ankle really? all busted <laughs> up or not having a you know something in my eye all the time or a headache or uh-huh. you know all these different things. And I, I, I take that phrase and I try to apply it to love yours because I think the message of, you know, just appreciate what you have. Money doesn't solve everything. That's that's a harder message for people to click with. You know, like it is it's because money, money is a weird thing. Like I, I live comfortably and I'm in a position where I, I can do th- things. And if, you know, if I come into a little bit of extra money, it's not life changing money. Whereas other people, you know, if, if they got a thousand dollars, that's huge because now they can get their car fixed or now they can do this or like, that's huge, exactly. you know, but then exactly. as, as you transfer from that comfortable zone into just having more, now you, now you get into this whole new world of, Craziness, <laughs> kind of like what J. Cole is probably talking about, you know. Uh-huh. And I think it's, I think it's normal, reasonable for just average people like us to go, man, wouldn't it be crazy to have millions of dollars and go do all these things and travel and shows and all this stuff? Because it just seems like a fun idea. And yeah. while those parts probably are fun, all the underlying stuff is probably just a nightmare. So yeah, yeah, love yours. Appreciate not that your life is perfect or my life is perfect, but just appreciate all the good moments that exist in your life because there's so much more than we realize because we're we're healthy. You know, we're not sick. Right. Exactly. And, you know, exactly. talking about that, I I don't usually follow all the social media stuff, but with this channel and having Twitter and Discord and just seeing conversations, having like everything that's going on with with Kanye right now, it's like. Oh shit, man. Like I'm so glad I'm not Kanye or somebody who's like Kanye in a situation right now where all this crazy shit's going on and it's just like no, I'm very happy to be a non existent <laughs> person in my house and that's it, you know? You don't have the whole world giving comments about oh, your, my God. your marriage and your kids and it's not even about music anymore. No, it's not. It's not about music at all. It's so it's- far from music that it's almost like 
What are we talking about here? Yeah. Does it even matter? Like, if it really doesn't concern us, we're not getting any views out of it right now. So. <laughs> right, right. Um, and it, it's so sad to me. I mean, not to dive too much into Kanye, but like, I don't, I don't know his mental space. I don't know what his concerns are and all this other stuff. But like, I feel like so many of these, these problems would go away if he would just stay offline. Just, just stay offline. Yeah, but he, to me, I, as much as I love Kanye, he loves attention, man. I, yeah, yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think that's one of the biggest problems. You know, it's this perfect storm of somebody who loves attention, somebody who does have ego, somebody who does have a musical empire, somebody whose public life is all over. You know, everybody knows all it and time. sees it. It's, I yeah. Yeah, man, I don't know how you fix something like that. And I feel like with J. Cole, he, um, to me, he's the perfect opposite to that. He really um, is. <laughs> um, and with this album, um, I think it made him run from the spotlight even more because it definitely thrust him into that. Yeah. You know, I mean, <laughs> he was already well known before, but this album, it really like, put him in the category of, one of the top rappers in the world. Um, rightfully so, too. I mean, the album is <laughs> impeccable to me. I even love the ending where he's just going off for 10 minutes. And just yeah. <laughs> what is it? Uh, Note to Self, I think is what it's called. Note yeah. to Self. He's yeah. just calling out everybody that worked on the album. Um, and made up stories about Jonah Hill. And Dale <laughs> yeah, that shit threw me off so much. I was like, what is he talking about? Jonah Hill and Dale Earnhardt? What are you talking about? I kind of believe the Jonah Hill story because I'm like, okay, he's a celebrity. He's yeah, a right. Celebrity. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's like, I just like. <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah, I wonder, you know, I hope. It's one thing I really like about J. Cole. I, there's a lot of things I like about <clears throat> J. Cole. I, I mean, everything. And I want to go back to this whole people being bored with them and stuff because this comes up all the time. But okay. in terms yeah. of J. Cole, I love how low key he is. I love how just, okay, yeah, he's a famous rapper. Yeah, he has lots of money, but he still just seems like a normal guy. Like you could walk up to him and talk to him. And if you didn't even know who he was, he wouldn't care. He would just talk to you like you're anybody else who, you know, you're just two people hanging out, whatever. Like he'd probably play basketball with you, sit down and have some tacos with you. Like he's just a dude. And I love that. And I, I think I think J. Cole is, in terms of a role model, he is just a, such a fantastic role model. I really appreciate it him and what he's doing watching that documentary about bringing that show to to Fayette and you know just mm -hmm. everything is fantastic I love it yeah um you're absolutely you're pretty spot on with what you just said um I don't know I don't know how much you know research or videos you've seen about J. Cole but you can literally google J. Cole riding a bike through the city yeah that's awesome um, I love that Fans, fan, like, 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 there's literally just videos of him just riding his bike, you know, wherever he's at. Um, and he does that because, well, he, he said he does that because he doesn't like the whole appeal of the flashiness. You know, of course, he can go buy a million dollar car, you know, he could pay for somebody to drive him around and do that. Like, he can do the whole celebrity thing if he wants, but he really hates the spotlight. <laughs> he really, truly hates the attention that comes with the music that he makes of course he's gonna love the money Who oh sure yeah of course yeah money? but as far as like everything else you know his life being picked apart and all this that and the third like he hates that and he does try to be as regular as possible that's why he um he said he doesn't have all the big crazy cars he doesn't even have a super big man he he has a mansion, but it's. Oh, I don't so, know what a modest. Uh, mansion right, is. right, right. A reasonable mansion. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, like he 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 does seem to be the guy where you just walk into Seven Eleven and he's there, yeah. or you know, walk into a, a, a Walmart and he's actually there are, um, right here in Florida, um, and. So, Fort Pierce, about 30 minutes from my city, he was in Walmart at like four o'clock in the morning. 
I think I think this was before the pandemic happened, because Walmart doesn't open twenty four hours anymore. But um, yeah, he he was in Walmart at like four a.m. here, and this girl who, who was just walking through was like, "That get cold," <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like you said, you know, like, like he he might get a taco with you, or yeah, like he, he does seem to be that reasonable of a guy. That's you know that's awesome and. While you were talking about that, it's it started to make me think about his song "Love Yours" even a little bit more because it seems like you know these people who who make it, whoever they are rapper rocker whoever they are you know movie star yeah. they make it big and then it seems like the first thing that happens is yeah you can you buy the nice house you buy the nice car you got nice clothes people are following you around and all this other stuff <clears throat> and it almost seems like it's so easy to fall into. Like it's the default. Like you have to do that. And yeah. I, I can understand anybody who, especially if they came from a poor background and they want to have nice things because it's just fun. It's something new. It's part of the reward. I, I get that. But at the same time, it, it almost feels like a trap. You know, if, if you do want to keep who you are, your low key personality, if you want to keep that intact, but then you go out and do all these flashy things, which then inevitably start to draw attention to yourself you you lose that part of yourself via buying these flashy things and what's cool about j cole is what with all the things that you were saying it seems like no there is a way to be famous have a lot of money and still yeah. keep who you are as a person but you have to make deliberate decisions and you have exactly. to exactly you have to reject certain things in order for that to happen even if you look at how he looks now that was all deliberate you know because um you know he tried to be clean cut you know for the cameras and this that and the third always have a nice haircut um he even considered you know buying veneers um because you know he has a song called crooked smile oh, okay. um that was on one of his earlier albums where he's talking about you know um i got these messed up teeth and i got all this money now it's easy for me to go get some brand new teeth but, you know, um, rather than try to please everybody else, please my label and all these people that want me to be clean cut and put together. No, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> I like my teeth. Um, and, you know, as time went on, he, he let his hair grow out to these dreads. People were literally making memes of him, calling him a homeless person because he had the bike. They're seeing him in public, no security. Um, he doesn't have any nice clothes on. He's literally just wearing some sweats a hoodie like i got on <laughs> yeah right right exactly yeah yeah um so people are putting him together like he's rich he's famous and we're seeing him on the sidewalk <laughs> he's rich he's famous and he's looking like this and he's like yeah yeah like why 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 do i have to fall into this image of being this rapper that you guys want me to be right you know, having the big chains and having a nice car and having a fine girl in my arm every week. Um, like, nah, that's what I love about J. Cole so much, man, because he's not the average rapper to me. Um, and he made a very deliberate decision to not do that, you know? Um, and that's something that you just don't see. Any new rapper that you might see come out nowadays, they look like a rapper. Yeah. Um, there aren't so many rappers that come out and, you know, have this idea like J. Cole, so... That's what I really appreciate about this album. Um, and apparently, like, you know, songs like Apparently, I Keep My Head High. And, yeah. Um, songs like Hello, um, where he's talking about his wife. Um, you know, I, I mean, just the album, it, it was a very, very different album. I'm sorry if I'm looking away. I'm looking at the track list. Oh, no, no, fun. that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> um, it's... Definitely one of my top, maybe top ten albums of all time, man. You know, going going back to what you're talking about with, you know, people making memes of them and all this stuff. <laughs> I mean, this is all stuff that exists online, you know. And so, yeah. it's this it's this weird thing because even even with YouTube channels, any any time you see anything where it's like, okay, I'm gonna start, you know, I'm gonna try and I'm gonna try and make it somehow, right? Whether it's music, whether it's art, YouTube, anything. The first thing you always hear, oh, you have to establish your online presence. 
You got to get your Facebook page and your Twitter and your Instagram. You got to get all this online shit so you can yeah. interact with the community. You know, you have to establish that first, which yeah. I understand there's validity in that. There's so much that happens in the online world now, but it's become so much of a um, must do like step one thing that mm -hmm. I feel like anybody who is trying to make it, they don't even consider the idea of, no, no, I don't. And I, I, I'm sure J. Cole has a Twitter page and YouTube. I mean, I'm sure he has these things. Not but, very active, though. <laughs> and, and the thing is, is if you're not active, then all the shit that people are saying about you online doesn't even exist. It doesn't even exist. And I, I, this is what kills me about social media. I mean, I, I, there are some positives. I'm learning there are positives about it. But generally, I just see it in a very negative light because... I feel like people get so hung up on these things that are happening online and they're just irrelevant. So much of it is irrelevant. And it's one it of the really reasons is. for like my son, you know, I, my wife and I, we don't do a lot of social media and I'm not going to let <laughs> my son have a Facebook page or any of that shit. Cause it's just, if you're on there and you start to buy into it and you start to think it's important, it never stops. It just never, ever stops. But yeah. J Cole, if you're out riding a bike and you're not online, you're just living your fucking life and you're just having a blast, you know? And all of these words mean nothing because they don't even exist. You know, what was interesting about him uh, um, before even social media really existed, he was coming up with really interesting ways to uh, get engaged with his fans and really develop his core fan base. He had concerts for a dollar. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, my God. One dollar. Yeah, you, you just pay at the door, and those those people who couldn't even afford a dollar, he just let them in. There you go. There you like, go. Like man. like those, it's those things. I, I I didn't I didn't get to attend any of those concerts. I mean, he did them all around America, but I didn't get to attend any of them. But once I started hearing about that, yeah, I was like one dollar, and <laughs> like and he was like, yeah, I mean, like. Lines were around the block. Sometimes people couldn't get in because yeah. the place was that packed. Um, that was that was when I knew that we were dealing with somebody that was different. Like even even your label wouldn't want you to do that. Oh no, they hate <laughs> that. I've, absolutely no. It, they, it's all about money, money, money. That's all the absolutely. label wants is money. They don't give a shit about the people at you all. You tell me you're gonna charge them one dollar a head versus five hundred. <laughs> so. Yeah, man. Um, was there was there anything that you didn't like about this album? Because when you put out your review, it kind of felt like you were on the fence about it just a little bit. Yeah, well, that's good. So we'll talk about this because this is something I consistently see, and, and you see it too. It seems like J. Cole, and I, I only know this album, so I can't really speak to other parts of his music, but it seems like with J. Cole in general, people either love him or they kind of go, eh, not really my thing. Yeah. And it's, I don't get it. I, and <laughs> I don't get it, even though I'm one of the guys that kind of goes, eh. And <laughs> what's really interesting is when I think about J. Cole and what I like from an artist, what I like from music, he checks all of the boxes. He checks all of the boxes. He's, he does have great lyrics, like you're saying. I do like his beats. I do like his flow. I do like that he's low key. I do like that he cares about the people and he tries to do things like $1 shows and all this other shit. I, I like everything about him. Yet for some reason, and, and even I was listening to 2014 this morning a little bit to just refresh my memory. I like the album, but I'm not in love with the album. It's not one of my top 10, top five albums of all time. And I, I still don't really understand why. And I d talked about it on my additional thoughts video. It seems like some of the people who are really, really into it, they're into it because this album landed in a, a the right spot in their life. You know, when they were uh, kind of no going, going through certain things. And so it just really, really connected on an emotional level. And so if it didn't land in your spot in life just right, it couldn't form yeah. those emotional connections. And then therefore you just miss it. I think that's what... I mean, and I'm pretty sure that's that's what's happening here with you, um, because I think anybody that hears the album, they're gonna say it's a great album. It's a great album, but, yeah. But in order to connect with it like I do, you probably had to experience it when it first came out. Like, you probably had to hear it 
the second hour after it came out, <laughs> literally, <laughs> or 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 you know, live with it for that first week that it was out, um, to to really take it in. And I I think I'm I'm pretty sure that's why it hits so hard for me because you know when it came out, I was going through a lot, man. I was I was really going through a lot mentally and emotionally. Um, and hearing as soon as Love Yours came on, I was. I was good. Nice. Nice. But well, that's great. <laughs> I love it. Down. Yeah. That's great when an album can complete like that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> um, it really hit home, man. Um, and l- like you said, people really do. You either love them or you're kind of in. Yeah. You know, there's still people who, who just think that he's just a boring rapper, man. They don't like his beats. Um, I don't know what it is. I mean, to each their own. Everybody has their own personal taste and opinion. You can't be mad at it either. So, I was, I'm just glad that you love it, man. <laughs> that you, um, <laughs> I was thinking seriously. about it. Um, it, it just kind of clicked about an hour ago. I was thinking about it, and I was trying to think of it in terms of metal. And one of the things I've heard about J. Cole is some people say he just doesn't have the whatever energy, you know, and... It's a, it's, a, it's a shitty word to use because it's so vague, it's so undefined. But when I take that idea and I apply it to metal, you know, the metal community is a weird one too in that there, it's not all the time, but it seems fairly common to see kind of like some one-upsmanship of, oh no, this, this band's heavier than Batman. Oh no, 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 this is heavier than that. They're, you know, they're always trying to find the heaviest thing. Yeah. But what's interesting is I can be fans of, you know, I'm fans of these different metal bands and they all have a different energy. <clears throat> and sometimes okay. I'll put on something and I'll listen to it and I'll go, yeah, yeah, this is really heavy and it's really loud. And I, I hear that, but I don't feel that for whatever reason. And it's, it's strange how that happens, you know, and there's no clear cut definition for why it happens. But when I listen to some of the tracks from a band called Sepultura, I feel feel that shit <laughs> like, like it just comes pounding in no matter what I do and then if I listen to tracks from other bands who I'm not really a huge fan of I'll I'll listen to it and I go yeah it's it's all there all the sound is there but for whatever reason I'm just I don't feel that one and I wonder I got you I feel like that's where J. Cole kind of exists like yeah he's doing all the things but for whatever reason for certain people he just doesn't have that energy that they're looking for to really really get into what he's doing i think um <laughs> i mean a simple and fair comparison would be kendrick um yeah kendrick's got some energy man big time energy and there's a t- to me there's a distinct difference between him and kendrick um i think because kendrick comes from california and has that gang background a bit he has that edge to him, that grit to him. Um, even with the way he makes his music, like the sounds can be all over the place. He can do different things with his voice, add different effects on his voice. J. Cole doesn't do none of that. You know, you're either going to get his raw singing or his raw voice. Yeah. Um, with Kendrick, he's going to add all these different effects to to pull whatever he's trying to do together. Um, and with J. Cole, it's... It's just me, man. <laughs> yeah, that's a good. <laughs> it's just me. <clears throat> that's a good point. That's uh-huh. a good comparison, and I think you know, I think that's a that's a fair critique of J. Cole and the difference between him and Kendrick. And you know, it is interesting going back to like artistry. You know, just just different artists and what people do in their artistic lives, and how some people they'll really work to try and just use everything they can to make you know whatever yeah, they want to make as good as possible. But then other people try and go almost like a pure, a purist route where there's like, no, I'm only going to use, you know, these range of tools, or I'm only going to try and make this thing the way it was made back in 1784 with the tools that they had at the time to try and make it just like they made it. And, and so obviously always going to end up in different results. Even if you take the same skill level, let's just imagine the skill level between the two people is the same, but they're using completely different tools. The result is going to be wildly different. And I wonder right. if, if J. Cole has, because I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if he's talked about this, but 
I wonder if J. Cole has deliberately taken that point of view of, no, I'm just going to be me. I'm not going to use a whole lot of effects. I'm just going to focus on me, focus on making some beats, and then that's it. Whereas Kendrick's like, I'm going to do whatever I need to do to make this be exactly what I need it to be. Yeah. Um, we've never heard J. Cole deliberately say that. Maybe he has in a line or two. Um, but I think just following him from his very early career to now, he doesn't use, well, he uses auto-tune a little more nowadays. Um, that I will say. I think that's the only thing that he's added to his quote-unquote arsenal. Um, you know, it's just the auto-tune on his singing or whatever. But for the most part, <laughs> you know with Kendrick, there's a million, oh, there's a million different things yeah. going on in that studio. Um, with J. Cole, you can you can hear the simplicity in his music, you know, whether you hear his raw voice or you um or you his raw singing, I meant to say. His raw singing or, you know, just his raw natural voice or whatever. Um I really think you should I mean, this is kinda just like off I think you should check out Drake. <laughs> He comes um, up every now and then. Yeah, he it, Drake has been an interesting one. Like Drake is the one I haven't like really commented on a lot because he does come uh, up. There's a couple albums that people talk about. Like what is it? Um, I can't remember. There's a couple. Some of his earlier albums. Take care. Yeah, take care. Take care is and the and one nothing that, was the same like, or something like that. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. It, it's Drake is the only one who I've not been like. Oh yeah, I'll listen to him, and I don't really know why. And it's I think. Well, it's just because there's probably so much Drake hate out there and it's so common to just bag on Drake for whatever reason. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just, I mean, I, he is on the list, but I mean, so why do you say that? Why do you think I should check out Drake? For what reason? Um, Because, okay, that's the three big dogs in rap nowadays. I'm pretty sure you've heard and seen Drake, Kendrick. Those are the top three rappers. Um, of my generation. Okay. I'm 27. Um, and there's always this ongoing race about who's the best out of the three. Um, to me, I think you would... It will put J. Cole and Kendrick in their proper places if you listen to Drake. To me. Okay. Um, Drake has more of an R&B side to him um, with a lot of his music. But he also has great rapping ability. <laughs> and that's the distinct um, difference between him and J. Cole and Kendrick. You know, J. Cole and Kendrick, they're more rap centric um, versus J Drake. It's both <laughs> R&B and rap okay. at the same okay. time on all of his albums, which is insane to me because um, with me loving his rap more than anything, um, you you're not gonna escape his R and B music at all. Yeah. At yeah. all. So um I don't know. And it, it would be interesting to hear you finally talk about some R and B um <laughs> within a rap, you know, album context. I feel like you get that with Tyler, but Tyler he he he's just so different he's with very different. He, yeah. Yeah. Um and with Drake his R and B isn't the same as as, as Tyler's R and B that you might hear in his music either. So, um, I'm just feeling like you might you might enjoy that, and I think you will finally be able to put, you know, those three rappers in their proper places if you actually enjoy Drake at all. <laughs> well, um, and I you don't know. I think too, you know, with this being a journey into hip hop. If you're not checking out Drake, you're not doing a full proper journey into hip hop. <laughs> you know, I mean, whether people like it or not, Drake is a significant yeah. part of what's happening in hip hop. And so, yeah, you just got to listen to him Drake. eventually. That's all there is to it. <laughs> yeah, that's I, I think that's a good sale. <laughs> you might have some people who are not happy with you recommending that. But, you know, <laughs> <laughs> life goes on. Just don't read the comments, as they say. <laughs> I really recommend it because um, he's he's literally on the Mount Ra Mount Rushmore of hip hop today. Um, so I feel like you know those three guys being as big as they are and being this competition, 
um, being in competition, whether they know it or not, they they to me they have to be talked about and discussed in their proper manner. And you haven't listened to Drake have, yet? Yeah, so. I haven't listened to it. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I did watch a documentary. I think it was I think it was during my week with Jay Cole's album, and it was talking about. God, I can't remember who, what it was. It was on YouTube and it was talking about, there's a lot of discussion about Drake and how Drake was kind of coming up. Those first couple albums, he was really starting to take off. And then Kendrick came out and it was like, oh shit. It shifted everything. Yeah. <laughs> because, because, you know, when J. Cole came out, Drake was already out. And those are my two favorite artists. And then I'm hearing about this guy, Kendrick Lamar, Kendrick Lamar. And I heard, um, Section 80. Yeah. I was blown away, man. I was blown away, man. And it really made me look at Drake different as far as rapping goes. <laughs> <laughs> because I had already felt like, you know, J. Cole was the edge, you know, before Kendrick came out. So I'm like, as much as I enjoy Drake's music more, J. Cole is definitely a better rapper. And then when Kendrick Lamar came out, I'm like, Oh, so Kendrick, the best rapper, <laughs> then it's J. Cole, <laughs> and then it's Drake. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it was really fun and really interesting during 2012 type, you know. Um, it was crazy, man. You know, this crazy. is something that I'm really learning to appreciate within hip-hop and rap in general is that with rock, you know, rock has been around for so long, since really the 50s, early 60s. I mean, I know rock is kind of... It's got some muddy origins in terms of when it actually technically started, but I think of early 60s for rock until now. So that's like 80 years worth of music. You know, mm -hmm. hip-hop probably kicked off in the 80s-ish, mid-80s. So I feel like rock has got... I think the first rap song was in the 70s. Yeah, that's probably that's probably accurate. Yeah. I, I don't know the old, old stuff very well at all. But mm -hmm. Neither do I, but I know that. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it's, it's really been interesting seeing how fast rap evolves and changes and shifts. And it's crazy to, to I, cause when I listen to rock at no point do I think, Oh, you know, in a couple of years, somebody's going to come along and completely change the aspect of rock. Like immediately. Really? Because I don't know. And I don't really know why maybe, maybe I don't listen to enough new stuff in rock. You know, I've got all these favorites that I listen to and I just listen to them all the time and I haven't branched out in rock, but it isn't like, where, oh, Kanye came out and changed everything. And then Kendrick came out and changed everything, you know, and, and what Dre did and NWA did. And it's, that doesn't seem to happen as often. Like with rock, it's like, oh yeah, this is a good band, but they didn't change everything. You know, it wasn't like they altered the rock landscape and, and what they did made everybody from then on change to follow them. I mean, you could, there's certain points, people point out Nirvana all the time with grunge and <clears throat> clearly there's been rock bands that are big and have had a huge influence on the music but generally speaking rock has remained rock where rap it seems like it's constant i hear about all these different eras that exist within rap yeah. because it's just shifting all the time and it's really interesting to me um you know that was a very interesting point and i kind of feel like i wanted to tie in with a point or a question i wanted to throw at you um you brought up something about not understanding the competitive nature in hip hop. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Actually, um, I, I understand a little bit more, but go ahead. I would love to hear your take on it. Because, and I thought that was really interesting that you said that because you know I kind of agree. Like you know, we don't necessarily have to have this competitive nature, but in the black community, it's involved in everything that we do. <laughs> <laughs> you said it it made me laugh because <laughs> i'm like you have no idea how deep it goes. <laughs> oh man <laughs> you're hearing it on the surface level with the music but in black households we compete with everything oh okay um who who brought the best dish over <laughs> we may go out in the um in the street and, and have a foot race Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. It's involved in everything, man. Who's got the nicer car, this, that, and the third. And it gets to be very petty and detrimental with the type of things that we compete with. 
how much money we got, yeah. you know, this, that, and the third, and all that type of stuff. Um, but when it comes to music, um, we treat rap like a sport, man. And I'm, like, I'm starting like to learn we, that. Like, we we really do. Um, I'm not necessarily, well, I can't say I don't know why, because it's always like, who had the better bars, or who wrote who had the best song or who had the better album and this, that, and the third. We always compare everything. Um, and with J. Cole, you know, how at the end of the album, he said, you know, well, at the end of Fire Squad, he said, you know, ain't no more kings, I'm destroying the crown, yeah. and this, that, and the third. Um, J. Cole, he is one of those artists. Um, actually, now I'm thinking about it as I'm saying it. He said this in 2014. Um but in his in his mo- more recent music, he's been trying to tell us that he doesn't want to be involved in the the top five conversations anymore. Um, I think he's more ex- accepting of um, maybe where the public has put him as far as ranking in J- um, Drake, Kendrick, and Cole. Um, more people are putting him at third now. Um, I don't necessarily have an opinion on that at the moment, but seeing well, hearing, hearing what you said and thinking about the, how competitive black people have been forever and hearing J. Cole say that, it's almost like, do we really need to put it into the competitive nature here? That's that's where I come from. <clears throat> I mean, you could probably imagine that I'm just personally I'm not a very competitive person. I I enjoy the competition within myself. You know, that's I think that's the competition that matters is whatever drive that you have that pushes you to do something better or or analyze a flaw that you might have and go, "Okay, this is a part of me and I need to deal with this somehow." Like to me that's the co- competition that matters. That's not to say that competition is bad. I had a, a lot of comments say, no, 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 man. Like like these these diss tracks and these people going back and forth sometimes, you know, freestyle and rap battles. Like that's a key part of rap and hip hop. I understand and that. And it's so fun. <laughs> and I, I, you know what? I, when you put it into a competitive aspect, that is what makes it fun. It's like, who's, who's doing a better job? And then when you've got the friends around and they're watching and listening and the crowd yeah. responds to a great bar that drops in, it's like, oh shit, you know, like... <laughs> When you say that, when you treat it like a sport, yeah, that makes total sense. It takes makes total sense. But <clears throat> sport at its core is a competitive thing. And in sport, there does have to be a winner and a loser. And <laughs> and for me, my perspective is I just I don't approach music that way. Like music and you. sport are basically the antithesis of each other. Music for me is something that you just take on a personal level and you enjoy it however it is that you enjoy it. And while clearly there's going to be some music that you love more than others, it all exists in its own space, you know? And yeah. so really that's, that's, that's been the, the struggle for me is just kind of taking these two concepts of enjoying music and also finding value in, in competition and trying to pair them together because it's a little difficult to pair those two together. Yeah. And it is um, <laughs> just just thinking about thinking about the diss tracks and stuff like that. Um, I think I think one thing that hurts the competitive nature is where, well, is when either the fans don't know where to stop or the artist doesn't know where to draw the line. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, because you know the fans can make it not enjoyable. Um, just with them either going too hard or or whatever the case is. Um, but the competitive nature, I think I think it's healthy, um, or at least it can be. Um, Kendrick Lamar, he, he doesn't really get involved with it too much because I think he kind of knows um, he's just the best. <laughs> well, that's the whole thing, man. When, when you are the best, you don't have to say you're the best because you just exactly. are. <laughs> and with J. Cole, he's, he, he's trying to tell us, uh, I don't think this is really needed. You know, we're all great. There's yeah. no space for everybody. Yeah. Drake is that one guy. Is like, oh, <laughs> yeah. I want to be the best. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you guys are talking about. Yeah. I want to be the best. Uh, so man. watching watching everybody have their own 
you know, view and opinion from a, from a fan's point of view, it's very fun to me. It's very fun to me, and I've always, you know, just like when people jump in that, you know, space of, you know, I want to be the best. Yeah. Um, and it's always fun watching the fans <laughs> say, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're not that guy yet. <laughs> yeah. I think that's what they did to Big Sean. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. Um, I, I'm not sure if you're familiar with him at all. No, I haven't but, listened um, to any of his stuff yet. He's a, he's a great rapper. Great, great rapper as far as the content and stuff goes. But um, he just that <laughs> he just doesn't have that it factor. Yeah. You know, like like a like a Kendrick Lamar or Drake or J. Cole does to, to be even really considered with those guys. You know, so and I love his music. I'm I'm a I'm a big fan of his music, but watching the fans react to him is very <laughs> funny because <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> because I know he sees it and I know he feels it, and I feel bad for him because of that. Because it's like he is a great rapper, but the fans just do not give him the nod <laughs> at all. Yeah, and you know, going back to what you said early, early on in this conversation, that uh, that stings. You know, when you're an artist and you're trying to create something, yeah. especially if you're giving it everything you have, if you're really mm -hmm. putting it in there, and then it turns out it just wasn't that great. Man, it fucking stings, man. Just yeah. stings. And and I love like like just as far as like what I love about music, he can definitely rap and like. He he brings a lot of the stuff to the table that I like, um, but he it just doesn't hit the same as when you listen to Kendrick Lamar and all these other guys that you really may love. Um, yeah, man, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what he. <laughs> you know, but then it's interesting too because, well, I don't I don't know why this just popped in my head, but MF Doom popped into my head like right away in. Because he is my favorite artist. Like I love everything really? that Tyler's done. I love Kendrick Lamar's ability and the music he's made. And I'm really enjoying my journey through Kanye's music. But man, there's just something about MF Doom and the style that he has, the comfortable ease that he has with his flow, the way he's making all of these rhymes and how it, it almost doesn't make sense because it's so good. It's like watching somebody who's really good at chess play chess, and you're like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> and then they just win. You know, they win every single time because yeah. they're so good. For whatever reason, when you mention the it factor <clears throat> and how it seems like even the it factor is somehow subjective. It is. It is. <laughs> that's, that's MF Doom for me, man. He just has whatever it is. It just clicked with me. I love that guy. I, I can't wait to check out more of his music. And I, you know, M, well, I know he's got all kinds of different projects, but I, yeah, yeah there's I, something um, about him. It just clicked. I never got to, um, I never got to listen to his music. Uh, well, oh, not man. that I didn't get to it. I just never checked it out. Um, I think I might have heard a song or two, but I, I never, I never really. Um, listen to him even after his passing, um, which which was I heard was very unfortunate. Like people didn't hear the, hear about the news for how long after? Um, I don't I don't know much about his death. I haven't looked into it. I should just to find out. But yeah, um, fans were shocked. I was shocked. I, I mean, I, although I didn't listen to his music, I had I, I've heard about him. You know his name and stuff before. But um, once I heard that he passed, I was completely shocked um but i definitely heard that his his music is very great i don't know why he was never on a big scale for me to really like oh that's his song you know even if i've never write like really listened to his music on my own there was never a song that i heard floating around out there yeah um for for, for me to actually want to go check it out so i don't know yeah, check out definitely check out Mad Villainy. That was the album I listened to. Mad Villainy. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's great. It's great. Oh man, okay. I loved it. Yeah, I think you'll enjoy it too. And you know, I, people have pointed out what the hardest thing about this channel is trying to pick which album I'm going to listen to next because I've got <laughs> you know 200 amazing albums to listen to. So there's these yeah. websites that rate different albums and their importance and all this other stuff. And Mad Villainy is always up there. Always up there. Really? Yeah, great album. Yeah. Check it out. You'll love it. I you'll love it. It's it's so easy to enjoy. Okay. Yeah. Um, was there anything that you really took away from Forest Hills Drive that um, you might not have thought that you would really like about J. Cole or or a certain song or whatever? 
you know, I, I didn't know anything about the guy going in, so it's completely blind. And what surprised me the most was just how positive he is in his message as a role model, as a person. I really, really love that about J. Cole, man. Like, I feel like he represents something that's very good. Like anybody, I would, I more than had, like if my son walked up and said, hey, what's an album I should listen to? Hey, listen to 2014, Forest Hills Drive. You know, like check that out because it's just, there's so much positive messaging that's happening in that album. And I really appreciate that. And I've seen so many comments regarding other albums and how, yeah, this album helped me out and got me through things and this one and that one. And, and 2014 is probably almost the top spot. I think the only one really that maybe beats it is Man on the Moon 1 because so many people love that one too. Yeah. Yeah, Force of Drive, same thing. Same thing with what you said. And, and, and I truly believe that's what really, like, it was a lot of things that made this album really stand out to me. Um, I had already felt how positive J. Cole was, you know, before this album, you know, listening to his um, his other projects before this one. But it really was the message, like, the message of no role models, how... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that, that song right there, talking about how there aren't really too many positive women or men out here right now. Um, the O3 Adolescence is a song that has always stuck out to me. That's a great I one. I don't know how you really felt about that song. Um, That's a great like, one. And it's so, yeah, the, the message in that, it really hit home for me because I was the guy in high school who never been a gangster, never been hard or anything like that. Um, I was always the guy who knew everybody but didn't fit in with one group. Oh, okay. Um, so when he when he you know got to the part in the song where he was telling his friend that he wanted to you know start selling drugs with him, and his friend was looking at him like, "The fuck? Yeah. <laughs> Why? Yeah. <laughs> I want to go to school like you, but right. I can't." <laughs> yeah. Um, that really hit me because. Although I've never sold drugs or anything like that, I've always thought about it in a sense because I'm like, I see what they have. Right, <laughs> right. I see the, I see how fast the money comes in for them. Um, and I see how they don't have to go to work it <laughs> every day. Yeah, that's really the big uh, one. I think the money is nice, but not having to just get your ass out of bed and work all day, oh every day, God. that's the part that really hits people. But the thing that always, like, well, one of the biggest things that deterred me was you're always looking over your shoulder. Yeah. Like, you don't know who's coming for you. Um, you don't know who how, who knows how much you have. Um, just, and you, you're always worried about the police. So that song, it really hit me because, you know, there were some times where I really wanted to, you know, um, take myself down a different path. Um, but, you know, I always just thought about they they also want to live a different life too, but circumstances and situations won't allow them to do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm pretty sure they would look at me like I was fucking crazy if I came over to them like, "Hey, man, um, <laughs> help me out." <laughs> yeah, and they were like, "Nah, dude. Like, I graduated high school with you, and you know, I wanted your opportunities that you have." So. Yeah, I think um, I think that track is does a better version of telling the story that Love Yours is telling. Not that Love Yours is mm -hmm. not telling. I mean, it's telling a good story, but Adolescence O three tells it in a in a way that it's easier for people to understand. Where mm -hmm. it's so easy to have eyes of envy when you look at other people and what they have, and because that's usually what we see. We see what people have. We don't see what they don't have. Usually, you know, usually. Mm -hmm. And so when he takes that track and he flips the script and goes, no, man, I want what you have. I want to be able to go to school. I want to be able to have a normal life. You know, I, have, I want to have opportunity for me. I don't have any opportunity. The only opportunity yeah. I have is trying to sell more drugs or go to jail. Like, that's it. I have no opportunity. Yeah. That, that track was really good at telling that story. And, you know, another interesting part about that song, it was, it was small, but I don't think too many people caught on to it, how he said, um, I hit the boulevard, pull up to my friend's front door. His mom at home, she still let him hit the blunt though. Yeah. 
not too many people's parents will let you smoke in their house. Yeah. Let alone smoke weed in their house. <laughs> <laughs> so whenever you go over to your friend's house, you know, you guys are just hanging out for the Saturday or whatever. Um, and get able to actually smoke weed inside their room. That makes you feel amazing. Like, wow, your mom really lets you do whatever you want over here, man. <laughs> like, how long can we hang out? <laughs> yeah, right, right, exactly. Yeah. Um, but then, but then, really yeah, oh, I'm sorry, man, but okay. I was saying, but then it's, it's weird because I've had friends like that where it's like, yeah, their parents let them do whatever they want. And it seemed like more often than not, those kids were a little bit more miserable than the kids who had parents with rules. That's always been super interesting to me, man, because when I talk to them, um, those friends, like when you really get to sit down and have a conversation with them about some real shit. Their parents aren't home or their parents don't pay them that much attention. That's why they can smoke weed in the house. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, that's why they can hang out all night. That's why they can go do certain things or or whatever that you might feel like you can't do. That's why they have a video game, a nice gaming system, because their mom bought them this so they so that they can leave them alone. <laughs> yep. Yep. That's exactly um, it. And and that's the saddest part about it because you know, like when you get the you know, you're talking to them and they're explaining all these things to you and they're like, that must mean that my mom really cares about me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it is hard to tell sometimes because all you're doing is getting yelled at every day. But it's like, no, nah, man, <laughs> there is a reason to it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, dude, we're at we're at an hour and two minutes. Um, okay. So that I usually try to keep these things around an hour. So did you have anything else? Do you have any closing thoughts or any final statements you want to put in here to cap off what we talked about? Um, I think we both feel the same way about the album, but I really wanted to say to you, I really appreciate what you're doing with your channel, man. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, and I know you kind of got turning tables on your radar too. Oh, yeah. I found oh, yeah. you guys on the same day. Nice, nice, <laughs> nice. I'll, I'll, I'm happy to share with you and I mean, anybody who's watching this, uh, we actually have a decent relationship turning the tables and I, Kevin and I message each other every now and then on Twitter and, and Connor joined my Patreon and I joined his Patreon. So we're in each other's discords and stuff like that. So there is, there That's is, dope, man. yeah, there's a friendship that exists there. <laughs> you know, clearly, clearly their channel has blown up huge, man. Huge. It's unbelievable. And I'm, I'm very happy for them that they have all access. And I will admit, I'm a little jealous as well. <laughs> Listen, man, you keep going and you're going to get there, man. I'm going to keep going. Yeah. I really love what you do, man. And how you, I love how honest and open you are about, you know, how you used to think about hip hop music back in the day and the rappers and all of that. Hearing you be that open and honest, you know, for, for some people that look like me, it may make them feel like, wow, oh, fuck that guy. But for <laughs> me, <laughs> for me and people who actually want to, you know, get your opinion about, you know, what you think about it, hearing you be that honest and open about it, it makes us feel like, so this guy is genuine with, oh, yeah. with his journey. He's oh, not, yeah. he's not just doing this because he wants some views and he's trying to get a little bit of money off a of rap. Um, I can feel how genuine you are. And that makes me want to stick around and support whatever you do, man. Well, I appreciate so, it. I really appreciate what you do. And I really appreciate being as honest as you are about um, where you've come from and where you're trying to get to as far as your channel and stuff, man. That's great. I, I thank you. I thank you very much. I mean, everything you just said has been the core driver for the whole channel is just be honest and, you know, come in and, and try and have an open mind and listen and, the thing too that's I, I try and focus on is if I don't like it, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I like every. You know, I feel like with reaction Thank channels, <laughs> reaction channels. That's I feel like that's what they do. Like, oh, this oh is so gosh, cool. I hate it. I hate it. Oh my god. But but on the flip side, you know, if I don't like something, I'm not going to come in and shit on it because just like you yeah. were saying early early in the in the conversation, when an artist is making something and somebody comes in and hammers it. It stings. And it's the same thing for the fans. Because I know if I'm listening to something that's been recommended, there are people out there that love it. They love it. And mm -hmm. so if, if I were to come yeah. in and go, this is trash, this is garbage, I'm not going to listen. It's, pe people feel that. So I'm trying to... I like how you say a lot, I don't understand this. <laughs> 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 
not quite getting this yeah. or this isn't hitting for me. Yeah. Like I love those terms that you use because it lets everybody know, okay, yeah, he's gonna need some more time with this one or he just really doesn't like this song right here. And, um, and the thing is, is, is that's true for everybody. You know, I I, I, mm-hmm. I know for a fact there are rap albums that you listen to and love, and there's a couple tracks on it. You probably go, eh, this yeah. is just not my jam. It's not my jam. Yeah. You know? That's all it is to it. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Well, I mean, I appreciate you having me on. Um, hopefully, hopefully we'll um, be able to have another conversation about another album at some point in the time. Um I'm all for it, man. And and I don't I don't know you know, I don't know what you do with your spare time, but come hang out in the Discord sometimes. It's kind of fun. I mean, we okay. there's conversations going on, and the other night a couple of us were in voice chat, just hanging out, just bullshit and talking about music and stuff like that. So I'm I'm fairly active on the on the Discord, although it's a little bit later in the evening, so it might be getting a little late <laughs> for you since you're three hours up on me. But yeah, check it out. We're in there. We're hanging out. It's fun. It's a pretty chill community too, man. Everyone's pretty cool. Okay, um, I, I'll definitely do that. I'm not big on Discord. I only downloaded it because I had to <laughs> yeah. do this with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, you know, now that I have it, I definitely yeah, check it out. And I mean, just around it. Yeah. If anything, you can just lurk and read and stuff. You know? Yeah. So it's fun. Okay. All right. Well, we'll we'll close it off here. Uh, it, Samuel, right? Malcolm. Malcolm. <laughs> Shit. I I couldn't remember. I'm sorry. I apologize. Malcolm, thanks so much for for so, coming on, man. That was a great conversation. I really enjoyed it. And uh, for everybody watching on YouTube, thanks. And we'll see you again next week.